Hi everyone, if you have decided on the focus edition of the GMAT, then you need to prepare for the data insight section with a lot more seriousness than you would have given integrated reasoning in the classic edition. In the classic edition, integrated reasoning was not part of the 800 score and was a separate section. I know a lot of test takers who invested far less effort into integrated reasoning than they did with the quant and the verbal sections. Because it was an additional score and did not contribute towards the main score, people took it a little lightly. However, with the integrated reasoning getting rebranded as the data insights section, with data sufficiency thrown in as well from the quant section, you need to invest a lot more serious effort into your integrated reasoning slash data insights preparation. And that's because it now matters way more than it mattered in the classic edition because it now is an equal player in contributing to your 805 score. So I want to just leave you with some basic fundamental thoughts in place when you are beginning with your data insights preparation. The first thought I wanted to see today in this video was that take the section seriously. It matters a lot more than with the classic edition. Beyond that, I want you to do three things as you begin your data insights preparation. Doing these three things would ensure that you're on the right track to getting a high score in the 60 to 90 score range that you now have for this particular section. So what are the three things that I want to leave with you today? Number one, you need to work on your skill development. And the good thing is, if you have already started with your GMAT preparation, at least to some extent, then you are building those skills in the quant section and the verbal section. What skills do you need to bring from quantitative reasoning and verbal reasoning into data insights? Very important skill that you bring in from verbal ability into data insights is your ability to draw inferences. In verbal, we draw inferences based on a paragraph or a passage that is given to us. So it's always just based on reading content. Here in Data Insights, it can be based on reading content. They can also test your ability to inference information based on a graph or a table or some other sort of quantitative data that is presented to you. But your basic skill of how to think through drawing an inference is a vital strategy that you will need to bring in while working on Data Insights as well. And to extend that, your critical thinking skills that you have, your ability to analyze and process information, and to be a discerning reader, which you need in RC and CR in verbal, are also skills that you need to bring in into data insights. So leverage the lessons that you are learning on these topics in verbal section to sort of set the foundation for your data insights preparation. Of course, you will have some questions that are based on quantitative concepts, especially concepts in arithmetic and algebra. So a lot of statistics and averages. So those are concepts that you need to bring in as well from your quantitative preparation into your data insights section. Will this be enough? Absolutely not. You are just getting sort of the foundation, the base in place so that now you can use these skills and additional strategies that you learn for the data insights section to sort of bind them together, to combine them effectively in order to answer the different questions that you have in the section. And the way in which you combine and bind the strategies with the fundamentals will also change based on which of the question types within the data insights section you are working on. How much importance do I pay to my inferencing skills? How much importance do I pay to my quantitative skills? That depends on your question types. So that's the next thing we're going to work on. First thing, bring your skills in from the verbal and quant sections. Second thing, make sure you evaluate and really analyze and understand the question types that are tested in this particular section. There are a total of five question types. You have data sufficiency, which is moved in from the quant section of the classic edition. You have graphic reinterpretation, table analysis, two-part analysis, and multi-source reasoning. All of which are versions of questions that you can find in the integrated reasoning section. However, you need to not just, you know, leverage your old integrated reasoning preparation if you have prepared for the classic edition of the GMAT, but really spend time thinking about these different question types and understand how they play to your strengths and how much of the analysis are you doing on these question types. So some of the things that you need to understand as you begin to explore the data insights section, 
you need to know whether a particular question type has multiple parts to your answering or has just one part. So you have regular multiple choice questions in multi-source reasoning, but a lot of your table, your graph and your two-part analysis questions, pretty much all of them in fact have multiple parts within a question. And then data sufficiency, of course, you have the standard five answer options for all data sufficiency questions. Your strategy and your time management per question will depend on how many parts there are within answering the question because you need to ensure that you are getting the multiple parts correct. You also need to determine what sort of an approach or what sort of a classification you are doing. So there are some questions where you take each of the answer options, so each row for example, and then you classify them into two columns. So these are classification questions you will find in table analysis and multi-source reasoning. And there are some question types where there are multiple columns again, but you do not need to classify every answer option into one of the two columns. For each column, you only pick one answer. So in which question type am I looking at it column wise and answering just one answer per column? Which question type am I required to look at it row wise and answer one answer per answer option? This will set the stage again for your ability to develop a strategy for the different question types. And finally, how much of the data processing do you do at the beginning when you just look at the question and then how much do you do later on when you are doing the process of elimination. That also will change from question type to question type. There are people who have one standard strategy for everything. If given a graph, if given a table, they will sit, they will spend time on it and they will understand every last bit of data before they go to the questions. But do I really need to do that? Do I need to pre-calculate everything? That can change from question type to question type. In fact, you take such calls based on one, the question type and two, what is asked in that specific question. So thinking about these while you are preparing for each of the question types is vital because that again helps you refine your strategy. The better strategy you have, the better you will be in both answering accurately and in managing your time effectively. Managing your time is going to be a little bit of a challenge in the data insight section unless you do steps one and two. Your skills development should be strong, your foundation should be very clearly established and you should have a clear discernible strategy for each of the question types. All right, so then what is the last one? The one thing I want you to keep in mind is when you are answering the questions, be very thorough. And what I mean by that is, Yes, time management is a problem in this section as I just mentioned, but take your time with each of the questions. We have established there are multiple parts to the questions, but there is no partial credit. Which means let us say for each row you are marking one answer and there are three answer options, which means within a question there are three answers that you have to mark. You get two of them correct and one of them incorrect, you are not getting two thirds of the credit for that question you are getting exactly zero credit for that question. For the sake of time management, people tend to sort of you know slow down in the beginning, but then when they see the clock ticking, they rush through the second half or the third part of the question itself. But within a question, if you fluctuate in terms of your time management, if you fluctuate in terms of how careful you are, then all the effort that you just invested initially in you know answering the first few parts carefully, I have entirely gone to waste because you did not stick with it till the end. So take it a little slowly, you need to ensure that all parts of a question are given equal importance when you are solving it. So the stronger your foundation is, the better you have question specific strategies, even despite the fact that you are taking your time with each question, the better you will be able to manage your overall time. But in the scheme of things, you know, if, even if it means like answering 18 questions effectively and rushing through the last two questions, that is going to be better off for you than rushing through a little bit of every question. So with whatever question you are working on, be very thorough, be very precise and absolutely play to your strengths. 
when you are practicing notice whether you know data sufficiency is my strength, graphic interpretation is my strength and so on and uh, have question type specific sort of average times for you to target while you are working through the section. So, it is not going to be that you meet the same average time for all question types, you, there are certain question types where you can take a little bit more time and somewhere you, sh you should aim to do it faster. So, you need to work on your strengths in such, that, such a manner that you are able to achieve this objective. So, those are the three things that I want you to have as your major takeaway um, as you get started with your data insights preparation. Focus on skill development from content verbal and then add it add on to it in your data insights preparation. Evaluate the question types so that you can do that adding on process and be very question type specific in developing your strategies and be very thorough in your answering make sure you plan for your time management accordingly. If you do these three your skill development, your evaluation and your you know thoroughness while answering you are set to do well in the data insights section. Of course, you can always use the Bizarco's resources. We are help here to help you with your GMAT preparation for the classic edition and for the focus edition, of course. Right? So, with regard to the focus edition, if you are trying to you know, get started with your data insights preparation, you can sign up as a trial user. The focus pro course is available. So, one thing you can do is you know, get started with your data insights preparation using a couple of the uh, trial lessons that we have. You can also just sign up for a demo class and attend one of our live online classes that is available for the quant and the verbal sections and you can sign up for the data insights classes as well to get started with your preparation. Do not wait, do not think too much about when you are doing and what you are doing and how much information is out there. Reach out to people like us, set up a call with us and we will be able to tell you a lot more insights on exactly what the test involves and how to go forward with your preparation. This is not going to be the only Visaco video on the data insights section. We are going to introduce you to all the question types in future videos. So, we are planning a series of videos on the data insights section so that you feel better prepared about you know just getting started with data insights as well as your approach and your preparation for the section. So, look out for those videos, subscribe etc etc that every YouTuber tells you to do and stay tuned in for the future lessons. But either way start now, the focus pro is out, the trial account is possible, demo classes are possible, simply call us and talk to us about your questions regarding the data insights section. I wish you the absolute best in your focus preparation.